And right now, Tyrone, no big deal. Feeling a little bit nervy. Very excited. We are joined by one of the biggest rock bands in the world. You kicked off the uh, Australian shows with uh, one in Melbourne the other night. How did it go? It looked phenomenal. How did you guys feel afterwards? Yeah, it was pretty good. Yeah, I mean, right. as far as first shows go, you know. I mean, first show at all is always a bit, what can always be a bit ropey. A few bloopers here and there. <laughs> but um, ah, it was it was brilliant. Yeah, cool. Yeah, you pulled up one of your fans, Charlie, on stage. Absolutely crushed it. We actually got a text on the Triple J text line the morning after the show. Someone saying, up at 5am after seeing Bring Me The Horizon in Melbourne, Charlie XCX jumped on stage <laughs> for a song. Can you confirm or deny? <laughs> that was indeed Charlie XCX. <laughs> I, think I, think someone I don't think it was. Really <laughs> in disguise. That must feel pretty incredible, though, to, to know that your fans are so talented that you can just trust them to get up there and absolutely crush it. Yeah, you can't always trust them. No, you can't. <laughs> yeah. We've had a few, we've, we've few had dodgy few things. Yeah. Is it, has it gotten to a point where you have to sort of pick your battles with your shows, whether you're going to pull up a fan? No, I mean, whether it's, it's like X Factor, isn't it? It's either, <laughs> it's either so bad it's funny or it's good and then it's like kind of heartwarming. But like one way or another, everyone's going to have a good laugh. It's just, be, it's just good when you note words. That's all. Yeah. That's all we want. Mm. Yeah. And mm. speaking of maybe so bad that it's funny, Ollie, the other day I saw a tweet from Dane, one of the artists joining you on this tour. They said that you were at a bar together and the bartender recognised them and not you. Have you been able to recover? No, 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 my ego's still a little, <laughs> little bruised. They're off the tour. No, I'm kidding. No, <laughs> Dane is joining you for these shows as well as Make Them Suffer from Perth and, of course, Sleep Token from London. I saw in an interview a little while ago that you were talking about how you wanted to change up how these shows worked, that you wanted to maybe share the space and the stage with more artists. How has that felt just with, I can imagine you have so many people in the production, you've got so much in the crew, you've also got all of these artists around you. Does it just feel like a bit of a, a travelling circus almost with the amount of people around? Um, yeah, it's a bit, of, a bit of a mad level now, the production. I mean, I don't know if you've seen this show, but it's it's the biggest production we've ever done and there's a lot of, a lot of stuff going on a lot of moving parts <laughs> <laughs> but um no it's cool i mean it's we always want to give our support acts the opportunity you know like because we've done shows before and we've just been plonked in like this tiny little thing so yeah uh, it's just all about just being fair and giving these these artists an opportunity to do their thing uh, so but so yeah that's about it really being crowd best best show as well yeah you know i mean we've yeah. done tours where bands have like pulled us back do you know what i mean like told us oh you, you can't go out into crowd or have a db limit like you know like things to make make sure that they they're on top they're better do yeah you know what i mean and for us it's like we welcome the challenge of like oh these guys are crushing it we need mm. to up our game rather than trying to hold them back so and just making sure it's like a diverse lineup and there's there's summit for everyone and like we're, we're kind of showcasing different like you know like Dane said to me, oh, people saying it doesn't make sense that I'm on this tour and stuff. And I'm like, our fans are like cool with like different stuff. So I think you're going to have a good time. And I think uh, this is one of my favorite lineups we've ever had for a tour. Yeah. It's like super cool. Mm. And watching the footage for some of these shows as well is incredible. I mean, it, it sort of feels like you've just thrown everything that you've got at the wall and it's all just stuck. How does it feel to deliver this experience to your fans? Um. Yeah, it's cool. It's just months and months of turmoil. It's actually weird, actually, like, because usually it's there's so much trial and error with all this stuff, but we've kind of done all the hard work now. Um, like, I'm so used to, like, when we're, like, rehearsing is I'm not even singing. I'm just out from watching everything, going, change this, do that, do that. And now mm. I'm, like, it feels like boring rehearsing because <laughs> it's, like, I'm actually just singing now. Yeah, does um, it feel like you're kind of on <clears throat> autopilot or do you still get to have those, like, unexpected moments even though everything is so like precise the show itself is still like when we're in that moment it's still amazing do you know what i mean and it's still like every night's you know got its different things and every crowd's different it might be like one night the pit's crazy and then one night the sing-alongs are crazy and so yeah like we do get bored quite easily of what we do but also we've realized we we got to stop changing it because we change it so quickly that some people don't even get to see what we do. So we're kind of accepting that and then making our performance, you know, different every night, the way we handle stuff. And I think stuff like bringing the fan up and stuff like that does make it like for us, it's that little, little bit of variation in night. 
Yeah, I feel like this is going to be such a memorable show for so many people, one that they will never be able to forget. And I'm curious for each of you, what was like a live performance that you saw maybe early on in your career that still provides some like inspiration for the shows that you want to make with Bring Me the Horizon now? Um, I don't know. I never really went to like <clears throat> any big shows. You know, like arena shows when I was yeah. a kid. It was Eminem you went to see, didn't you? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I went to see Eminem, yeah. I oh, did go to see that. <laughs> <laughs> what from the Eminem experience can we expect? Shame sauce. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, bring bring Dido out. Oh, <laughs> yeah. stop it. Don't tease me. <laughs> but, I mean, all, all my memorable shows were always the small sweaty ones. I mean, I remember me and all went to see Glassjaw in, mm. in London. It was like... They just come back from like a hiatus and they played Brixton Academy and then they did one show at Camden Barfly and it's like a hundred cap venue and we'd been waiting to see Glassjaw for like ten years and we finally got to see him and it was just like a little sweat box and pointier energy and that's always a gig that stands out in my mind as being that gig where I was just like well that's never gonna be topped do you know what I mean yeah, yeah. That, was a good one. that was a good one. You said a little earlier about recording the shows and recording the audience. I want to talk about the idea of Eve and how uh, they sort of play a role in this show. Where did the idea of Eve come from? At first, it was kind of just like, oh, we'll just do it for Reading and Leeds. And it kind of took on a life of its own. And then this narrative started forming that actually influenced the next record a lot more than I thought. And it just, she basically just became this entity that felt very important to the show. And I thought, oh, we could actually like, carry on a story here and kids just love to seem like seem to love the like immersiveness of it so yeah it's kind of just turned into this like really big part that has like a narrative in the new album and everything so it's and it's it's actually been like a good like plot device for like the kind of themes and messages I'm trying to get across on a personal level Mm -hmm. and make it into something that it uh, feels like a like more like a story or a video game or a movie or something so it's yeah. Do you think that the live shows you've been doing as of late have like changed the trajectory of the album in any way? Or is that kind of like ideas set in stone and you're kind of moving towards the finished version of that project? It was weird because when we did Survival Horror, we hadn't been playing shows for because of lockdown. So all that record was made without any of that feel, whereas maybe this next one you do like when you feel like a like a certain tempo or a bounce or way people react to certain things live, uh, like hits, and you, you are influenced by it. To be honest, I'm not sure if, if it is. Like a lot of the stuff we've been doing recently is just like we make it and then we worry about how it's going to translate live. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it does usually influence you on some level, especially because we've been writing on tour as well. So sometimes you like... When do out. you find time to write? <laughs> There's actually a lot more time, like... A lot more time than you think. Like, you know, we play for an hour and a half at like <laughs> nine o'clock at night. So we do have a full day. Um, although there's not as much time as we think. Like you think that and then there's always like press or, you know, all things out in day. But it is a real good way to like kill some time. Do you know what I mean? Because you do have three or four hours a day at least where you're like, what the fuck do I do with my life? Mm. Hearing you talk about the narrative as well with this new record, um, I mean, tw- 20 years on from your first EP, it feels as though Bring Me the Horizon are uh, stronger than ever. But how do each of you feel at this point in your career? Old. <laughs> Achy. Achy. <laughs> now, you know what? I think we all feel pretty good. It's like you say, it's just this band just doesn't ever cease to like surprise you from where we can take it from, like you say, like... 20 years this month actually we've been in a band we played our first show so I mean we didn't even think we'd still be around like 20 months later do you know what I mean so um, it, it just is what it is it's just that old saying you know what I mean just you just gotta just gotta ride it ride the wave and yeah. see where it takes you and fortunately for us it's taken us 20 years down the line yeah but we're all a bit bit older a bit achier but I know we're, we're, we're still good yeah, have yeah. You all right. Yeah. I'd say we're happier than we've ever been in, as a unit. Like, yeah. it feels the, great at the minute. Yeah, yeah. The, the vibe is so good. But then, also like on a creative level and like our, like our output and stuff like that is like I think we've just learned so much over these twenty years from where we've been and even like maybe five years ago when things were getting really big for us. Like I think over the last five years we've learned a lot of lessons from that. Like who do we want to be and how do we want to play this game and stuff like that and I think we found a really good spot like where the creative like the creation of our music and everything we put out is like 
the most important thing over like fame, over success, over money, over like all that kind of stuff. I feel like we're in a real good spot where we just like, we've had a taste of that world and we've realized that like at end of day, like in 10, 15 years or whenever this is kind of like done, I want to look back and just go, you know what? We're so proud of the body of work we did. Like, cause that's all like we really care about. So like, and I think it sounds like, yeah, that's obvious, but it's it's a real like hard headspace to, to get as a band, especially when you're a band that of like, when you go into like headlining festivals and getting big and people are saying like, oh, you could be the next or, or like what you just said when we came in or one of the biggest rock bands in the world. It's like so easy for that to mess with your head because mm. it's and not in a negative way, but yeah. I'm saying like, all I got to say in my head is like, that's not true. And like, <laughs> yeah. it doesn't matter that it's not, that's not true. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And I think that's uh so really, it's really easy to to just fall off and, and like, just be like high on your own supply, believe your own hype and get lazy and get complacent. Um, but I mean, 20 years on, I feel like we're still working. We're working harder than we ever worked before, even though it's like not easier, but like we're in the best position we've ever been in our lives. So it's like, it's just a grind, but like we love the grind, so. Yeah, it also feels like 20 years on, the fans have nothing but like trust in you. They've been yeah. following mm. you, a lot of them, for that full 20 years. And it must be so fun to, I guess, use the rollout of your music uh, to to create some like, not hype, but just to like engage with the fans. Yeah, because definitely. Because with every post you guys do, I mean, you wiped the socials a couple of days ago, put up uh, a bit of a teaser for some new music for a, a new album. And the comments were just excitement after excitement and looking into every little detail is that kind of fun to watch the response or do you just like drop it and and walk away from it i mean i i mean i deleted my instagram app a couple of months ago so i haven't been on it as <laughs> yeah, much yeah, yeah. to see but i do feel that like what you're saying and i feel like with our fans i think like i feel like we're again we're in a place where people trust us and understand and get that we're not trying to be this or that like they just know now Brim the Horizon could be anything. Mm. The next song, the next album could be anything, but it won't definitely be something. I think at one point people thought, oh, they're just getting more mainstream or more poppy and we're losing the band that we loved and all this stuff. Whereas now I just think they're like, we don't have a clue what's next <laughs> and we don't care. We trust that like, do you know what I mean? We're along for the ride. Yeah. And I think that's a really nice place to be in. You know, you're always going to get haters and you're always going to get people that just want the old sound or just want that or people that are stuck in past. But I think on like a general level, like the connection between us and our fans has also never been better. Mm. Like there's like this kind of in inside jokes we have, whether it's like the made outfit or whatever, you know what I mean? Like we have all this kind of stuff that there's a, a, a true genuine connection there where we can connect, which is at some points really difficult when like you just feel like everyone's against what you're doing or like you're just looking at the negative stuff or the negative stuff's like feels overwhelming. Mm. Um, yeah, so I think as well, like, we've just got, like, such a good, like, we're at arm's length, so, you know, fans. We're not the kind of people that are going to sit there and talk with them, but also, like, we have a connection that we can maintain and that feels really nice and f feels really genuine and not forced. Mm -hmm. We don't have to be those kind of TikTok kids <laughs> or, like, we don't have to do all this stuff that we would actually hate, do you know what yeah. I mean? We can just be ourselves, get on with it, and the kids are kind of there generating that stuff for us and, and we're having a laugh with them. We're so like grateful for that kind of passion, T you know, 20 years on as well. Like whether it's like fans from day one or kids that are just getting into our band, it's, it's pretty nuts. I think for a band our age to feel so like new hmm. to, to people. So yeah, it's, mm. it's cool. I feel as though you've built like this world for bring me the horizon from the visuals, from the music to the performance, to your shows I feel like from post-human, we're getting this sort of video game, post-human world era. Was that the idea? Was that the vision going into, I guess, post-human album up until now? Yeah, I mean, the vision was born from like, it was writing an album in lockdown and we had to do it remotely. So we, and obviously, we, you know, like, you remember like when everything had to become remote, we, we kind of thought in our heads, this is going to be so difficult. It's going to be so hard to do. And then we realized like, two weeks in actually it's exactly the same as you know there's some things where like a human connection and being in the same room does help but like you did realize oh i can actually get on with a lot of stuff mm. so we initially thought it's going to be really hard so let's just make a record that's like us like the thing that comes first and it's not too much experimentation and and we just kind of 
we just kind of did what came out and and then people loved it and people thought it were like super like the best stuff we've done in years and we we're like so and then so it was kind of born out this idea of like okay let's just be us and and then see how we can push it in other ways after and I think we have like sat into that a bit from from there on out where like I think at one point our band wanted to be some we just didn't want to be a rock band almost you know we didn't want to be a metal band we wanted to be something else we were kind of disillusioned with our scene and all this stuff and I think we pushed it so far that we alienated a lot of our fans in some ways and also we were trying to be some of that like other other artists other bands do better do you know what I mean and like right and I think rather than just take influence from other places we were trying to so hard to be something different whereas with the post-human stuff it's like let's do what we do well let's not let's not lose there's not many bands in the world left like us that still scream that's still aggressive that on a mainstream level anyway on a level where there's that you know like it's, there's actual the general population might know who we are yeah so like I kind of started to soften up on that and be like you know what that is a shame if we lose that if we stop screaming if we stop doing the heavy stuff we stop because there's kids need that yeah so it's like do that but then how can we push it in every other way how can we experiment it's like and I think that's just become like for us like so much easier it's like we were going uphill before we didn't take bands on tour with us that had anything to do with us we just kind of did whatever was like kind of expected or what we should do we went now nah, fuck that we're gonna do it. we're gonna do the opposite thing <laughs> yeah. which was cool and fun and like for us like creatively like nourished us but it also didn't work you know what i mean we we're trying to put festivals on with all these other artists that no kids who like bring their eyes and want to see do you know what i mean so it's like whereas like we've kind of took the path of least resistance for this new stuff and then worked out how we can make that progressive and how we can like, I don't know. It's almost like a bit for us and a bit for bit, bit for them. And it's yeah. just like, we're happier. It's just working better now, to be honest. And it's like, we couldn't have done any of that without every like step we've chosen. But it's just like, like I saying with the fans, like getting us now and everything being so good. It's just like, it's all a byproduct of like the kind of, way we're operating now. yeah everything that's happening behind the scenes yeah guys before we let you go if you each wanted to say something to the fans who are going to be attending these australian shows a little teaser a little like i don't know hype up talk <laughs> <laughs> what would you what would you say matt i'll start with you learn the words <laughs> <laughs> if you're gonna come on stage learn yeah. the words <laughs> matt um thanks <laughs> um, <laughs> now cheers i'm um I say it a million times, but um, yeah, it's cool to come over here, other side of the world, and still be able to play these massive shows. And I remember the first time I came to Australia, and it was mad. <laughs> uh, the tour wasn't great, but the experience was... <laughs> what, a Megadeth? Yeah, it was a Megadeth tour. <laughs> yeah, that was hard good. work. But uh, the experience was mad, and um, we always love coming back here, and it's, it's, yeah, it's a privilege to be here, so thank you. And Ollie? Yeah, I uh, guess just echo that. I mean... Our first ever number one was in Australia. Mm -hmm. It was the lowest ever number one of all time, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was still pretty cool. And I, obviously, I'm I used to live here, and I've got Australian passport, so there's like I never thought in a million years we'd be like playing these kind of shows this size. Like when we played Melbourne the other day, and someone said, "Oh, the next Melbourne show is bigger." Mm. I was like, "How? Like, <laughs> like what's there's going that many on? people in Australia?" Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we're just like we're so happy that we get to come over here and 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 that it's successful uh, and i'm not doing a shoe so <laughs> <laughs> and just echo that again not doing a shoe but guys thank you so much for coming through cheers thank for having you. us thank thank you. You.